there, Evie here. As you can probably imagine by the title of the video and the setup I've got going on here, this video is all about pumps and how they can sometimes be incorrectly set up so that they run at 100% or you have no PWM control over them in the BIOS. Uh, or speed fan. Avoid speed fan. That's probably the problem that's causing things in the first place if you're using speed fan. Uh, it's quite difficult to set up, so just don't use speed fan. Use the BIOS stuff. If it's not working then, then you can look into different things, but don't use speed fan. Um, anyway, uh, unless you know what you're doing, then use speed fan. But if you've never used speed fan before, don't use speed fan. Uh, anyway, uh, I will describe what's going to happen with this now uh, uh, while I'm showing some b-roll footage of filling up this system that I've got going on here. So basically the system is, I'm going to fill up the, the pump uh, with this container next to it, as you can see now. Uh, I'm going to fill that up with water, uh, with standard water from a tap. This isn't going to be running for very long, so I'm not going to need to worry about uh, antimicrobial agents and that sort of thing. Um, it'll all be dried as soon as I finish this video. But uh, I'm going to set all that up, and then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, show examples of how, how the pump can get incorrectly set up uh, in terms of physically set up and sometimes software set up, but software should be pretty apparent by now. Uh, and you'll be able to see the speed or the flow rate uh, from the physical tube that is just not connected to anything pouring into this container. And you might be able to hear the noise of it as well uh, compared to other noises um, of the different setups we have. And you'll be able to know when we're controlling it because it'll Still, the flow will slow down and speed up and that sort of thing and I'll represent that and explain it to you uh, as we're going along. Uh, so anyway, so uh, uh, basically I'll do a bit of an explanation while it's all being filled up and that sort of thing. Um, basically the reason I'm doing this is because I've been on Linus Tech Tips forums for a few months now. Uh, I had a problem initially uh, with my pump that was running 100%. Uh, it was a little bit more complicated than a lot of the ones I've seen uh, on the forum before because some people just don't look into things like PWM or the pumps or things like that before they get, uh, they go into water cooling, they just go all water cooling, get the stuff that c it connects together and go for it. Uh, and then they come across problems and they wonder why. Anyway, so a lot of people go on the forums and say things like my, my pump is broken, it runs 100%, I have no control over it, and there's quite a lot of times, especially in one instance on uh, one of the threads, there was 35 replies saying uh, RMA it. Not necessarily all of them saying RMA it, but there were 35 replies before I got involved and actually asked some questions, they were saying it's clearly broken RMA and that sort of thing. Uh, but you need to go into further things like what motherboard do you have, uh, what pump is it, well, generally the pump is not ne necessarily an issue, um, what fan head is you plugging it into, um, and that sort of thing. So, uh, so anyway, now the setup is complete, I imagine, I'm just carry on talking and hope I've edited it properly. Now the setup is complete, we'll go into uh, the different problems uh, that cause it to go on to do 100% speed and then we'll go into a couple of the solutions depending on your setup sometimes you might only have one fan header available and you'll need one solution and sometimes you'll have multiple fan headers available or a fan hub or just a splitter or that sort of thing and we'll go into those solutions uh, through the video so I hope you enjoy it and like and dislike if you if you want to and, and comment of course I always like talking to guys uh, on the comments because it's it's great fun and, and we can generally have a good, good conversation anyway uh, uh, enjoy the video and I'll carry on with that. Okay, so first things first, apologies for the uh, the jankiness of recording. Uh, Handycam I think is a little bit crude, but uh, but I think it's the best way to give you the most true perspective of, uh, of what we're doing here. So first setup is, uh, I've now changed, well first things first, I changed the uh, the Molex over from the, uh, the power supply unit below to the power supply unit that's attached to the rig. Uh, I did a little bit of testing first just to make sure that it all, it's all set up properly and the tripod's over there so you're going to be able to get a, a good a glimpse of the water and how fast it's going. Uh, one thing I've noticed is that the noise is not necessarily uh, the uh, good representation of how loud it would actually be because it's outside, it's on like some uh, sort of padded mat there, it's on that so it doesn't scratch the table and vibrate about. Uh, but anyway, so first things first is we have a Molex connector Molex connector, sorry, uh, for the power supply unit uh, that's trailing down, grapes are there, uh, and it's connecting, or will be connecting, directly to the uh, the um, the pump. Uh, there isn't going to be the two pin, which is in a four pin header, but there isn't going to be that connected, uh, so we're just going to be going with the Molex on itself. Now, you can probably take a guess what's going to happen first, uh, but we may as well see it for the sake of, uh, of clarity, so I'm going to connect that up now, and then start it. This is this, by the way, screwdriver, is how I start the computer because I haven't got it in a machine, so that's a pretty cool thing that can happen. Just got a text. Right, so let's start it up and then see exactly what goes on yet. Yeah. 
So there we go, that's the sort of stream we're looking at to start with. You can see it's pretty powerful, it goes the distance. I'll just drop that into the water there. So you can't really hear much noise, but that's because all the vibration has been dampened by the pad, but that is the kind of power we're getting. Now we can go into, obviously we can go into the uh, the BIOS, uh, the BIOS, we're in the BIOS, we can go to the hardware monitor, we can check the, uh, the current curve, which you can see uh, here, there you go, uh, and you can see the, the fans to the right, which are uh, on the uh, box tower, and if I turn all this down, then you should see the fans stop there on the right, there you go, fans stopped on the right, but clearly the pump is still going, so there's no control, and that's pretty obvious because all there is is 12 volt power coming from the Molex connector, and the pump will assume that there's no signal, so it shall go at full speed, uh, and then we can turn the fans back onto some sort of position up there, uh, and then they'll kick off to the right, so you'll be able to see them fire away. There we go. So, next one. Okay, so let's go on to the first real scenario. I don't think plugging in the Molex connector uh, is really a true uh, example of what most people will do. I think, personally, I think the, the one that I've seen most on uh, on forums is this scenario. I'll jump into it straight away to not waste anybody's time too much. Uh, so, got our motherboard there. We have our pump over here, and that'll probably be sort of somewhere in your, in your computer. Molex is connected, same as last time. But instead, the second cable that's coming out is the 4-pin sort of 4-pin that plugs into the system fan. So if I can zoom in there and everything goes stable, you can see that system fan over there, you can see it sits upside down. Then CPU fan here is what typically people use for, say, uh, what's over here, which is a, a fan split. I'm so sorry how bad it looks, it's terrible, but I haven't got, well, I have got a case, I just can't bother putting it into it, because uh, the new case coming up which is, a, is a Fractal Design something or other, uh, Fractal Design Mini G something. So if you're interested in that, then uh, stick around. Uh, but anyway, so let's start it up in that configuration. So bear in mind, that system fan there is a 4-pin. It's a 4-pin system fan header. Uh, you may think, I know what's going to come up, you'll be able to control it, or I know what's coming up, you might not be able to control it, but we'll see now, uh, considering that I've literally said that uh, this is one which people commonly do, and uh, it doesn't go very well, should give you a good idea. So, uh, anyway, I'll start it up, sorry if it's out of focus very slightly. Okay, there we go, so we started up. Let's see if I can by manual focus and there you go. So you can see we're pretty heavy on the start there. I'll put delete to go into the BIOS. So there we go. So if we go to our what are we on? Standard one. Right, okay, so if we go into the hardware monitor, see there, we go to system fan. We can turn system fan all the way down. And for some apparent reason, there is absolutely no control of system fan. Turn system fan 2, all the way down. Everything is spazzing the crap out. Doesn't know what to do. So you can see there, system fan 2 is at 4700 RPM. And there's nothing we can do that stops it. So if I go up here, we can see there. You can hear the stream of water, you can see 4700 RPM, rather blurrily. You can turn it down to nothing, turn it down to low, it's still 4800 RPM. For clarification, smart fan on there, we can turn smart fan onto the normal fans, we can turn that down. and the stream of water just keeps going. So that clearly hasn't worked. And we'll get on to why that hasn't worked once we've figured the other ones out. 
Okay, so that clearly didn't work, uh, and there's a good reason for it. Uh, if you check your motherboard manual, or check the motherboard manual for the Z170M Mortar motherboard, you will actually find out that that, um, that fan header, the system fan headers on this motherboard aren't PWM. They've, the fourth pin isn't a speed control pin, it's called NC. And as far as I can tell from looking around on the internet, it, that stands for not connected. It's not connected to anything. And that's potentially because, from what I can tell, is because on more premium motherboards with the same setup, that PW, that fourth pin is actually um, um, used as a PWM pin. That fourth pin is made, so it is a speed control pin which makes the header PWM. On this not so expensive motherboard, the controller might not be rigged up for that, so it's only not connected. Uh, which means that you can get a DC voltage to the fan that you're plugging into it, but you can't get control of that, of whatever you're plugging into it. So that's the reason for that. Uh, so let's move on to the next most common one uh, to try and get around that issue because the CPU uh, fan header is PWM. Uh, let's have a little look at the next one, I'll explain to it now. Okay, so the third idea that people get stuck on uh, in terms of my pump is only running, running at 100%, I've got it plugged into the CPU fan header and it's not working. Uh, so we'll look at this this one now. This this one is the plugging it into the CPU fan uh, hub um, or fan hub that's plugged into the CPU uh, CPU header. So uh, if I flick this round, there we go. So you can check this out here. So. Bottom three are the fans, which you can see all around. So fan one, fan two, fan three, and then the top left one is the fourth fan, if I move this cable out the way. So there we go, that's plugged up onto there. And then that one top right, which if I move the cable more, you can see is our is our pump. And you can trail it around if you really want to, to the pump. There you go. So that's not not lying or anything about anything, that's, that's what it is. I'm only trying to be here to help you guys. Um, but anyway, so uh, so I'll start the computer again. It's plugged into the fan hub, which then means that, it, that it's being dished out a PWM signal, as it were, you, you can imagine. Uh, so I'll start the, uh, the pump going now. If I focus on there, then it should give us uh, a good focus as we start up. So hitting the power on now. There you go. Oh, gotta hit delete. There we go. Did I catch it? Yeah, I did. Okay. So, again, we're gonna do the same test we do normally. You can hear it going and you can see everything as it is. Hardware monitoring. CPU, let's check out the top there. So CPU 1 at the top, that's the only thing things are plugged into. CPU fan header, is everything's plugged into it. Fans are going. If I turn the fans down so far that at this temperature they're off, you're going to see the fan over here. You're going to see that slow down. So let's stop. But this is still going. So, yeah, so clearly whatever's going on with the pump, it's not listening to the signal that's being dealt out by the fan hub from the CPU header. And there's a good reason for it. Let's go handy cam again. So you can see it's still all going. They're not. That's still the the header. Actually, if I turn the uh, the lighting down, actually, if I turn the lighting off, there you go. So you can go. Now here's the problem over here. There you go. You can see the left pin there. It's not connected to anything, and that left pin is actually the most important pin in this whole system. It's the speed control pin. That pin allows us to control the speed of the pump. So without that connected, it is just the same principle as if the pump was just connected to the Molex. It's not getting a signal from anything, so it's just going to carry on running as fast as it can for the safety of your system. And that's how things go. So, let's try a different tack and we'll see if we can fix it a different way. Okay, so we've done all the problems now. 
uh, and now we pretty much know the solution already. So instead of plugging your uh, your fan header, that thing, the fan header piece of the of the pump, uh, into any old four pin, you need to get it to plug into a PWM four pin. That's gonna slide down there. So you need to get it to plug into a PWM compliant four pin. Check your motherboard manual. Don't leave it. Uh, don't leave it up to a decision of I'm a man. I don't need to check a manual. I don't think anyone believes in that anyway. It's just a joke. So. If you haven't caught up with the joke, it is just a joke. You need to get one of these if you're in a sticky situation like I'm in. Uh, basically, if you've only got a, a motherboard that only has one PWM, out, uh, PWM output or compliant header, you need to split that signal. So you need to get yourself a fan hub like I've got. Uh, mine's, mine comes from the back of another case, one of the Fantex M3 Evolve cases. Uh, but you can get one, uh, a third party one. Uh, you can get Fantex do another one, which is uh, is uh, in a shell, a plastic shell, which means you can't trip wires and stuff inside, which I'd recommend. There's also uh, something commanded, uh, something like a thermal take commando or something, or commander, I don't know. Uh, anyway, you need to get yourself one of those, uh, and then that can, uh, you can attach up to something like eight different fans to it. Uh, and then if you want to get your pump to work as well, clearly the pump is not going to work on the fan splitter, on the PDLM fan splitter. So you need to get yourself one of these, which is a, uh, a Y splitter. So you have yourself, if I can get this to focus as much as I can, first plug in that plugs into your CPU fan header, plug that into there. That's got four pins you can see from the four shiny bits there. Then that splits into two. So if I can get these both together at the same time, that would be great. So you go, so you've got two that come off it. One has four pins, you want to see the one there that's got four pins, and the other one has three pins. Doesn't matter which one you plug into either, because the fourth pin is, is there. It's, it is alive, it's there, it's there and kicking, it's alive and well, alive and kicking, whatever. It's there so you can plug in that fourth pin from the two pins which you can see clearly this is the, uh, the header that comes off the, um, the connector that comes off the pump. There's only two pins there. It needs to plug into the fourth pin which both of these have. So make sure the one you buy has got at least that fourth pin and you'll be great. We'll just do an example, a demonstration that it works and I'll even plug it into the third, one of the three pins, not four pins, just to, just to prove that, that, that it all is all good and well. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, to clarify that everything is well, as I said it was, we have CPU fan one. I can even zoom in on it for dramatic effect. There you go, CPU fan one. That's got the splitter involved, that splits out to two different ones. The one here on the right goes through to the pump, and then we can trail back. And you can see the one here on the left goes around in some janky circle that goes down into the fans. Now we'll see how they both react, the pump and the fans. Shouldn't be any surprise, you know what's coming up already, but we'll just start it off quickly now. There you go. So already. The flow is significantly reduced. I missed the BIOS! Damn it, I'm gonna have to restart. Okay, there we go, we're in the BIOS. So if we zoom out now, we can get a good idea of what's going on. I'll get the blurry edges out of the way. So if we can just capture you can capture the uh, the water flowing. Sorry, my phone there. Hardware control. So, first things first, let's turn it down. So, down here at 79 degrees, it'll be running at 0%. So, at the moment, it's running at 43 degrees. So, when it goes to 0%, it's obviously going to be not spinning. It's pretty self explanatory. Anyway, so you can see top left there, yeah, CPU RPM down to nothing. There you go. See how the fans are not going. Obviously the GPU fans are on their own their own terms. You can see there that the pump will still run. The pump is intelligent. It doesn't just follow blind orders of whatever voltage is thrown out to it. It controls itself. So you need to give it the PWM power, the PWM speed control pin. That's all it needs. It needs to know what speed you want it to run at and it will regulate itself. If it goes to zero, it's still running. There is still flow. It's, it's pretty conclusive proof. <laughs> I mean, we'll go up there, we can just check that out. There you go, zero RPM and we're still running.
Yeah, the fans are doing nothing. So there we go. Uh, I'm going to edit this together. I don't know how long it's going to be. It's taken me quite a while to record, but I hope you stuck around to the end. Uh, you'd be willing to give a like, that would be great. But if, if you stuck around to the end, I hope you found it really useful. Uh, and uh, hopefully, if, if you have somebody that you know that is having issues with their pumps, uh, and they can't, you, they can't control the speeds, show them this video, show them all the steps, and show them exactly where they're going wrong. That's the most important thing. You need to know where you're going to go wrong. Uh, sorry, this is not focusing on me because it's not centralised. There we go. So you need to show them where they're going wrong, and then show them where to go right. Because they need to learn why they're going wrong, not necessarily what's right, they need to know what's wrong. So, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found it useful. And uh, I'll soon be doing uh, a um, unboxing of the Fractal Design Mini G, I think it is. I'll put the name up here somewhere. Uh, and I've done an unboxing of a Cooling Sanctuary. So if you want to check that out, then please, in the top right hand corner. Um, I used to have this all in the Fantex N2 Evolve Watercooled build. Check that out in the right hand corner as well. Uh, probably nobody's watching this, but thank you very much for watching so far, and uh, I will catch you hopefully in another video. Bye-bye.